exercise for 17 will bring us through learning objective number nine. What have we got here? We've got multi-product break-even analysis. Gogan Company manufactures and sells two products, basic and deluxe. Monthly sales, contribution margin ratios, and the contribution margin per unit for the two products are shown below. So we're given a lot of information, and we're not given a lot of information. What's asked of us? The fixed expenses, total 400000 per month, required, number one, prepare a contribution format income statement for the company as a whole. All right, so what we have are we have two products. We have basic and we have deluxe. And let's total that up. So let's see what we get out of the sales. What are we told for sales? We're told that we have 600000 basic we're told we have 400,000 deluxe for 1 million total less our variable costs well we're not told anything about our variable costs so we have to figure this out is there any information here that can help us well we have the contribution margin ratio and if we call sales 100 percent we know that we have 60% as our contribution margin ratio. This must be 40%. If this is 40%, 40% 40 of 600,000 is 240. So yes, we can figure it out. That would leave us 360,000 here. We have to do the same analysis over here. If we let sales be 100%, we're told for the deluxe, our contribution margin ratio is 30 5%, that would make our variable expense ratio 65%. 65% to 400,000 is 260, leaving a contribution margin of 140. So for the total, we just add, we just add across. 240 plus 260 will equal 500,000. And again, if this is 100%, 500,000 is 50%. That should leave 500,000 here. And we can check to see if these two numbers add up to 500. 360 plus 140 equals 5. So there we go. Minus our fixed costs, and I don't like to do it over here. I like to bring it all the way in. Minus our fixed costs, because we're only concerned with the total, right? Minus our fixed costs of 400,000 leaves 100,000 as our operating income. Now, if you're doing it in Excel, if you're laying out one of these in Excel, you may want to put it over here to keep all everything in one heading. But if you have 10 different products and you, you have your headings over here, you have to scan all the way across the screen to find the number. That's why I like to sort of put this, bring it right up to the total column. It's just a matter of preference. There is no one true way to do it. It's however you feel comfortable doing it, right? Number two, compute the overall break-even point in dollars for the company based on the current sales mix. Since it's dollars, the formula we're looking for for break-even is fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio since it's dollars. But this is the overall ratio, so we had to calculate this over here. We needed this number. So our fixed costs are 400000 The overall contribution margin ratio is 0.50. So we need $800,000 in sales at the organizational level, given this mix, right? Number three, what's being asked of us in number three? Compute the overall break-even point in units for the company based on the current sales mix. Now, in units, that's different. We can't just say 50 units because we need to know how many units of basic and how many units of deluxe. We know $800,000. But how many units is that? Well, what's our sales mix? Let's start with figuring out our sales mix. Basic is 600,000 of a million is 60%. And deluxe is 40%. So of the 800,000, we're going to get to units, but we have, we're working with dollars right now. We have to work from dollars to units because there's no way to do a contribution margin per unit at the organizational level. So 800,000 times 0 0.6 equals $480,000 has to come from sales of basic, right? And 800,000 times 0 0.4 equals 320,000 
must come from sales of D lux. Great. So now we need to figure out how many units that is. So we got to figure out basic and deluxe. Just follow along with me. We need our selling price for basic and our selling price for deluxe. So we have to look down here and see what kind of information we have that we can work with because we need to work with it. We're told that we have a contribution margin per unit of $9. So let's write that down. Contribution margin per unit here equals $9. And under deluxe, we're told our contribution margin per unit, contribution margin per unit equals $11.50. So can we figure out what our selling price is from the contribution margin of $9 per unit? Well, we certainly can. $9 is 60% of our selling price. So if we divide this by 0.6, we'll get $15. Our selling price must be $15. If we have a contribution margin of $9, our variable costs on this must be $6, because this is 100%. Remember the 40% and the 60%. Well, it's the same thing with the lux. We can write down 100%. We know it's 65%, and we know that this is 35%. So we should be able to figure it out going, going the other way. We're told that our contribution margin per unit is $11.50. So we got to figure out our selling price. Well, if we take $11.50 divided by the 0.35, we'll get a selling price of $32.86. $32.86. So to get from $32.86 down to $11.50, we must subtract $21.36. So we're getting there, aren't we? This is a tricky one. So just to recap where we've been, we know what our break even is in dollars for the corporation as a whole. We know our sales mix is 60-40, which means 480,000 of that 800 must come from basic and 320 must come from deluxe. This little side thing that we did here was to figure out well, hang on a second. If 480,000 must come from basic, how much do we sell each unit for? We had to figure out the selling price, which is 15 bucks and 32.86 for deluxe. Now, we're ready to go. So our basic break even point in units is the number of units we sell to equal $480,000. So we need to sell 480,000, but since the selling price are $15 each, we need to sell 32,000 of those. And our deluxe break-even point in units is the same thing, 480,000 divided by $32.86, $32.86 equals 9,739 units, and this is rounded up, always round up. Even if this were 9,738.001, you'd round up. Otherwise, you'd have a loss. You'd always round up. So there is our break-even in units. If we sell 32,000 basic CDs and 9,739 deluxe CDs, we will sell 480,000 and 320,000, which adds up to 800,000. And if we keep this sales mix, we'll keep this contribution overall contribution margin ratio. Number four, point number four, is asking us, if sales increased by 50,000 per month, by how much would you expect operating income to increase? Well, if sales increased by 50% per month, our contribution margin ratio is 50%, so sales increase by $50,000 times our contribution margin ratio. That's our 50,000 times 0 0.50 equals 25,000. We would expect operating profit to increase by $25,000. What assumptions did we make? Well. The big assumption is that our sales mix was constant. In other words, to sell that $50,000, 30000 of it came from basic and 20000 came from deluxe. It came in the same 60-40 ratio that got us the 50% margin. Also, we assume that if this 25000 was our contribution margin and it went straight to the bottom line, we assume that our fixed costs were also constant. 
Also, we assume that if we increased our sales, we would still pay the same variable cost per unit. We wouldn't get any further discounts, so our variable cost per unit, we assumed, was constant. And to get that extra increase in sales, we assume that we didn't change our selling price. We didn't put anything on sale to achieve those extra sales, so that we also assume that our selling price was constant. In other words, this extra increase of 50000 was purely just an increase in demand for no other reason than they wanted our product. That's the assumptions that we made. Number five. Number five says, if sales increase by 5,000 units per month, by how much would you expect operating income to increase? Well, now it's in units, right? So we can't just say we can't use this scenario here. We have to say, well, 5,000 units per month increase. That would be 60% of those would be basic, so 3,000 would be basic, and 2,000 would be deluxe. And to figure out how much it increases, we multiply each one by its own contribution margin per unit, times that contribution margin per unit. So 3,000 and the contribution margin per unit, we're told, is, is $9 plus 2000 for deluxe, and the contribution margin there is $1150. So that will give us $27,000 plus $23,000 will give us $50,000. So we'll have an increase in sales of, uh, uh, sorry, an increase in our contribution margin of $50,000. And since our fixed costs stay the same, that goes right down to operating profit. So if we increase units by 5,000, we increase operating income by 50,000. What are your assumptions? My assumptions are these, are the same things. My assumptions have not changed, that my sales mix is constant. That's why I did this. That my fixed costs were constant. That's why I said this 50,000 in contribution margin goes right to the operating income. My variable cost per unit is constant because I use the same contribution margin per unit, assuming that the variable cost per unit didn't change, and that my selling price was constant because my, very, my contribution margin per unit hadn't changed. So these, these are some big assumptions that we're making. So to keep our sales mix constant is almost impossible in the real world. We can't control that. We can't stop somebody from buying something saying, sorry, you'll throw my sales mix off. So the sales mix will fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis, so that's not entirely accurate. But it may be close enough. The fixed cost, that's a fair assumption. Our variable cost per unit, as we increase our volume, that may not be realistic, but variable costs would only go down, so this would be a conservative estimate, which is good. And our selling price is constant, which may or may not result in higher sales. Keeping our sales price the same may not get sales higher. So just be aware of the assumptions that you're making in these types of analysis.